Hi, and welcome to Jamie DeRoy and Friends. I hope you had a wonderful new year. Lots of exciting things to start this year off. On Broadway, SpongeBob SquarePants has opened, and what fun that is. It's conceived and directed by Tina Landau, choreographed by Tony Award winner Christopher Gatelli, and the book by Kyle Jarrow. SpongeBob SquarePants stars Ethan Slater making his Broadway debut with Gavin Lee, Lily Cooper, and Wesley Taylor. SpongeBob SquarePants is playing at the Palace Theater. You're gonna wanna take the whole family to see this one. Theatre Club and the Royal Court Theatre have teamed up to bring the London hit The Children Over. It's by Lucy Kirkwood. It's directed by James McDonald and stars Francesca Annis, Ron Cook, and Deborah Finlay. It's a wonderful play with some incredible acting. The Children plays through February 4th at the Samuel J. Friedman Theatre. Are you hungry, love? Have we got any steak? You know we haven't. I feel like a steak. I feel like tearing something's flesh with my teeth. There's salad or crackers. Salad or crackers? You mean I have choices? A la carte! Do you hear that, Rose? The decadence coming from my wife's mouth. It's like the last days of Weimar Berlin in here tonight. Not or. I didn't mean or. I meant you can have both. Both! Both! Have you taken leave of your senses, you woman? You are showing off. He's showing off, Rose. I can't wait until this is over. I cannot actually wait to roast a chicken without feeling like the Antichrist. How much longer do you think the power shortage will last, Rose? Why should I know? You're still in touch with the world. I imagine you as someone who reads a newspaper, watches TV, tweets. <laughs> do you tweet, Rose? <laughs> I do not tweet. No, we're not tweeters either, are we, dear? We've barely mastered the microwave. <laughs> we're just simple retired nuclear engineers slash farmers who have no idea when the powers that be will resume normal service. Get that, will you, Hayes? If you've not come here tonight to woo me away from Hazel, then why have you come? <laughs> I'm going back <clears throat> to work at the power station. Do you know what's serious? Yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. Someone has to restore control. Rose, are you sure you want... people to do that. Yes, but they're all so young. Most of the engineers are under 35. But it's their job, it's what they're trained yes, for. Yes, but lots of them have families. Their whole lives ahead. And I just feel, I feel very strongly, that it's not fair. Every day they're there is less life. They've raised the radiation exposure limit from 100 millisieverts to 250 Yes, millisieverts. we heard. And these young people, these children, basically, actually with their whole lives ahead. And it's not fair, it's not right, it seems wrong, doesn't it? Because we built it, didn't we? Or helped it. Hmm? I mean, we're responsible. You have the power to. You have a power. 
you have power. And you both already had long and full lives. Long? <laughs> long? I am 67. That's not long. The people working there now are in their 20s and 30s. They have young families. They Look, it's what you know. I come from a line of very long living women. <laughs> My granny was 103 when she died peacefully in her sleep. Not bleeding from her gums, not hair falling out, nausea, bloody vomit, diarrhea, not leukemia, body riddled with... The effects of the radiation could take 20 years to affect us, by which time we'll be... By which time we'll be dead anyway. Well, probably, yes, or die. I yes. am not old! You must have known what you're saying. She is you saying you have passed your sell-by date. You are disposable, shriveled up cannon fodder. This bloody country! I should have lived in the Mediterranean. I could have sat under an olive grove like a pickled walnut till I was 120. I would have been respected. They would have called me La Gerondisa. My age would have been a badge, a badge of honour. No. I think there's honour in this. I think this is very How honor. dare you come here tonight? Show up unannounced and bring, bringing this poison into... I did into send an email. Well, what good is that when we're not using the computer? No, we're not using the computer, Rose. It eats up the power. And anyway, what a thing to write in an email. Dear Robin and Hazel, how are you? I am well. Would you like to come and get ha cancer with me? What font did you Hazel, use? Hazel, please. Do you want to make a smiley face at the end? A row of kisses. L-O-L-R-S-V-P. <laughs> the London hit Farinelli and the King is now playing on Broadway at the Belasco Theatre through March 25th. It stars Oscar Award winner and three-time Tony Award winner Mark Rylance. It's a performance not to be missed. The cast is stellar, the sets are amazing, and the singing is to die for. Farinelli and the King is written by Claire Van Campen and directed by John Dove. Beautiful sets, beautiful costumes, a beautiful production. See it at the Belasco Theater through March 25th only. There's a new trend. Sometimes a play runs on Broadway and then transfers to off-Broadway, and Jersey Boys is no exception. After 11 years on Broadway and winning so many Tony Awards, including Best Musical and Best Book, this play is now at New World Stages. It's written by Tony Award winners Marshall Brickman and Rick Ellis with music by Bob Gaudio and Bob Crew, and directed by two-time Tony Award winner Des Mackinoff. It's choreographed by Sergio Trujillo.
one's for the girls has been extended at St. Luke's Theater through the end of June. It plays Fridays and Saturdays. And it stars Jenna Robbins, Haley Swindle, Tracy Bear, and Anissa Folds. It's written by Dorothy Marsick and directed by Tamara Kangas Erickson. And now for our cabaret roundup. Starting at Birdland, on Monday, January 8th, part of Broadway at Birdland series, Gabrielle Stravelli and Billy Stritch in Down for Double. Every Monday night following Broadway at Birdland is Jim Caruso's cast party. You never know who you're going to find performing there, and it's usually quite a hoot. On Sunday, January 14th, it's Kurt Elling and Anne Hampton Calloway, quite the dynamic duo. On Monday, January 15th, John Pizzarelli brings his Nat King Cole show to the club. And then, from Tuesday through Saturday, it's John Pizzarelli on his own with another show. Over at Green Room 42 in the Yotel, on Monday, January 15th, it's at tonight's performance. It celebrates understudies, covers, swings. It should be quite the show. You can't believe how many stars we have today that started as understudies. At the Late Show on Monday, January 15th at Green Room 42 is Kyle Taylor Parker in the Soul Session. He has some wonderful guests with him. At Don't Tell Mama on January 9th, it's a Barnum and Bailey World starring Martha Lauren. Two-time Mac Award winner Bobby Horowitz is bringing her show, It's a Number, to the club on January 29th. Among the performers is one of our favorites, Sidney Meyer.
over at the Beach Cafe. Catch Steve Maglio singing Sinatra by request. Steve and his trio will be there starting January 21st, every Sunday until who knows. At Feinstein's 54 Below, from January 6th through the 13th, is Emmy, Tony, and Golden Globe nominee Matthew Morrison, one of my favorites. On January 13th at The Late Show, you can catch Will and Anthony Nunziata. On January 17th, one night only, Baby Dream Your Dream. It's a celebration of women songwriters from the Great American Songbook, and it's produced and hosted by Deborah Grace Weiner. It features Kanita Miller, Margot Siebert, Emily Skinner, Karen Ziemba, and directed by Mark Waldrop. Over at Cafe Carlisle from January 30th through February 10th, the designer Isaac Mizrahi returns to Cafe Carlisle with an all new show. At Cafe Carlisle from February 13th through the 24th is Tony Award winner John Lloyd Young. He won his Tony for portraying Frankie Valley in Jersey Boys. He'll be appearing at the club once again. Here is a look at John Lloyd Young. Very sad note, Chris Gillespie, who played at Bemelman's Bar at the Carlisle Hotel for the last 16 years, died suddenly in mid-December. I met Chris in 2000. I brought him on my show even before he got the job at Bemelman's. He was so terrific. Great pianist, great person, great father. He's played Avery Fisher, Jazz at Lincoln Center, clubs all over the world. Chris will be missed very, very much. Here is a look at Chris Gillespie when he first appeared with Jamie DeRoy and Friends in the spring of 2000.
Well, I have my reading cut out for me because Neil Simon's memoirs have now been released in paperback. And what a read it is. The foreword is by Nathan Lane and the afterword by his wife, Elaine Joyce. Neil Simon has received three Tony Awards, a Pulitzer Prize, Kennedy Center Honor, and the Mark Twain Award for American Humor. We're adding this one to our must-reads for theater books. For one night only, on Friday, February 2nd, the New York Pops brings heart and soul to Carnegie Hall. It's under the direction of Stephen Reinecke, and it stars James Monroe Iglehart and Capathia Jenkins. At the 92nd Street Y, Lyrics and Lyricists presents the Bobby Darren story, and it stars Jonathan Groff, directed by Alex Timbers, and it plays January 20th, 21st, and 22nd. A Bronx Tale has a new star. Adam Kaplan has joined the cast. The music is by Tony Award and eight-time Oscar winner Alan Menken. Lyrics by Glenn Slater. Book by Chaz Palminteri. It's directed by Robert De Niro and Jerry Zaks. It's 3 a.m. in the Bronx, New York. I'm on the corner of 187th and Belmont Avenue. This was my neighborhood. This is a Bronx tale. Hanging with the crew on the still, on the still.